we've spent quite a bit of time establishing the central limit theorem. What are its premises, its conditions, what things have to be true in order for the central limit theorem to apply, and then what are the consequences of the central limit theorem? Namely, what is the distribution of the sample means? What is its shape? What is its center? And what is its spread? And then we noticed that in spread we learned a new definition, something called the standard error. It's a glorified standard deviation, but it's for this very special sampling distribution. So now we want to apply all of this to some new problems. So let me scroll down to the next page, or the, a couple pages away, and look at example one, finally. So everything else up to this point has just been kind of establishing how this works. So now we're going to actually get to use it. So we have random independent samples are drawn from populations with parameters given below. Can we use the central limit theorem to describe the sampling distribution of x bar from the given information? And if so, give the shape, center, and spread using symbols or expl um, explanations or formulas if necessary. All right, so looking at this first part, it says that mu equals 100, sigma equals 30, and n equals 40. And nothing is known about the shape of the distribution of this population. Ah, so we could be a little bit concerned because it might not be normal. Oh, but it is because our n is 40 and 40 is larger than 30. So we have that condition met. And we already have, I don't know if you noticed this, conditions 1 and 2 automatically. They're right there. So we have condition 1, condition 2, and condition 3 all met. So let me type this up. There we have it. So we're proving that we've met our first conditions first two conditions, well, we don't have to prove those two because they're given to us to begin with. Condition number three is the one we really have to work at a lot of the time, to be honest. Often one and two will be kind of either given or we can kind of wave our hands at them a little bit. So once we know this, then we know the shape, the center, and the spread. The shape will be normal, right? That's the condition or that's the outcome of the central limit theorem. So the shape is normal. The center will be the mean of your x bars, which would be the mean of your population, which is 100, right? The centers don't change. And then what does change is your spread. Your standard error becomes sigma divided by the square root of n. So that's 30 divided by the square root of 40. And if you use a calculator, you can find that that's 4.7434. Um, just in case you need to see the calculator entry for this, let me type it. It's 30 divided by square root, which is above your x squared button. So second square root, second x squared, and then 40. Enter. And there you have it, 4.74, just like I said it was. So there's your spread. All right, now looking at letter B, we obviously have conditions one and two, so that's no problem. That's always going to be given to us, right? It's for the whole problem. But condition number three, we're in trouble. And the reason we're in trouble is because we don't know the shape. See that nothing is known business right there? That's a concern, right? So nothing is known. Well, that's all right as long as your n is large, but our n is only 20. So n equals 20 is not larger than 30. So no, we don't have our conditions met and we cannot apply um, the central limit theorem. And you're done. Right? There's nothing more to do here because we can't figure any of this out because we don't know that the central limit theorem applies. All right, next. Oh, okay, well, you might be worried about n equals 20 on this one as well. However, it is known that the population was normal. So I'm actually giving you conditions 1, 2, and 3. Right here, I'm telling you right now that the population is normal right there. So that means that I'm not only giving you conditions 1 and 2 like above, I'm actually giving you condition number 3 on a silver platter. So they're all given to you. So yes, yay. Right. So that means that we can apply the central limit theorem. So we need a new shape, center, and spread. Well, the shape and the center aren't going to change. They're still normal. They're what they've always been. So normal and the mean is still 100 here because that's my mu. But my spread is going to change. Instead of being 30 divided by the square root of 40, it's 30 divided by the square root of 20. So if I grab a calculator and I go up here with my arrows and get here and press enter, that brings the last calculation. I can just use my left arrow to get in there. 
and type a 2 over that 4 and press enter and I'll have 6.708. So that's what I have, 6.7082. There we go, 6.7082. And there we have it, there's our new spread. It's different because, of course, n is not as large on this one as it is on the one above for a. a has a larger n, so notice it has a smaller spread. The spread is only 4.734 on this one, whereas down here the spread is 6.708 because n is smaller. Right? The, the larger the spread, the smaller. I mean, the larger the n, the smaller the spread. All right. Last one. Um, we are in trouble because we know it's skewed left right here. It's skewed left and n equals 20. Well, n equals 20 is not enough to guarantee that we've overcome that skewing. So we actually don't know that it's normal and we are not, um, condition number three is not met. And that means we cannot apply the central limit theorem because n equals 20 is not larger than 30. It's not enough to overcome um, the skewing and guarantee normal to, um, here, let me write, overcome the skewed left and um, guarantee normal. Now I put guarantee in quotes because it's not really always guaranteed for starters. There are some distributions where you could have n equals 50 and it's still not normal. Um, also, by that same token, there are distributions where 20 is fine. You saw one right up here. n equals 20 was really normal, right? Very close to normal, normal enough. Let's put it that way. Right, so we need n equals 30 to guarantee though, and we don't have it. So we're done. There's nothing more we can do. We cannot apply the central limit theorem. We cannot discuss the shape, the center, and the spread. Right there. All right, now let's move on to the next one. So the following figures show three sampling distributions from a population that is skewed left with mu equals 4.42 and sigma equals 1.4712. So our mission is to, to figure out which distribution is a sample size of four, which one's a sample size of eight, and which one's a sample size of 12. So we look at the three. Remember that the larger the n, the larger the sample size, the less spread you're going to have. So let me write that up. All right, just remember, because of the central limit theorem and the definition of standard error contained therein, uh, that namely the standard error is sigma over the square root of n, the larger your sample size n, the smaller your spread is going to be and the more normal your shape is going to be. So when you look at your graphs, you want to figure out which one's n equals 4, which one's n equals 8, and which one's n equals 12. Well, the one with the largest spread, which is this one down here, this has got to be n equals 4. And it's because it has the largest spread of all three, of all three graphs. All right, so it has to be that one. By that same token, the one right above it has to be n equals 12. And that's because it has the least amount of spread of all of the graphs. And you can tell it just by how far over the graph is going from left to right. I mean, look how low this this bottom one goes. It goes below three, whereas this one doesn't even, this one just stops at 3.5, right? So the larger your spread, the smaller your sample size, right? So the largest spread will be the smallest sample size. And now if we look at the top one, you can see it goes farther to the left than 3.5. So it's got more spread than graph number two, but it has less spread than graph number three because graph number three goes all the way below three. So that one has to be n equals eight because it's kind of in the middle. It's the Goldilocks, if you will, of the group, right? Because n equals eight. So the spread is just right. It's, it's the middle amount, middle amount of spread. So it's the middle of the three sample sizes. Now let's take that standard error formula and let's apply it in two different ways down here. 
So we look here, um, we have the top 40 colleges and universities in the U.S. in 2017. I've only listed the first four. There's a whole bunch more. And we're going to look at the mean and variance for the top 40 colleges is given in the stat crunch output. And that's a typo. It should be for the enrollments of the top 40 colleges. Undergraduate enrollment. Sorry about that. At the top 40 colleges given the stat crunch output. Suppose you're going to take a random sample of size 3 from this list. Assuming the requirements, oh, there's a big one. Assuming the requirements for the central limit theorem are met. CLT, central limit theorem, that's the way we abbreviate it a lot of the time. So that means we don't have to show all those conditions and all that stuff. We just assume it's met. What would be the approximate standard error of the subsequent distribution? So notice right away that the, the table gives you the variance, which is 56148717. Now we know from chapter 3 that that's sigma squared, or s squared actually. It's probably, this is a sample, so it's s squared because this was a sample of, of the colleges and universities. Okay, so then that means that the standard deviation, which is s, is the square root of s squared, which is the square root of 5, 6, yada, yada, yada. And I'm going to grab a calculator, because I'm not going to figure that out on my own. So I'm going to take the square root, second square root, five six one four eight seven one seven enter and I get seven four nine three point two four five or so so I'm going to type that in seven four nine three point two four five all right so that's the standard deviation now, how does that help me? Well, standard error, remember, is technically sigma over the square root of n. But when sigma is not available, we'll approximate it with s over the square root of n. So that means that it's approximately that number we just found, 7493.245, divided by the square root of the sample size, which I'm talking about a sample size of 3. It says right here, use random samples of size 3. Right there. So that's my sample size that I'm going to work with, which means I'm going to take that number that we found with the calculator, I'm going to divide it by the square root of 3. So take that number, that answer, and divide it by the square root of 3, and I'll have an answer that is 4326.227. And that is my standard error. Oops, I should give that a little box because that's the final result. And I just scrolled back real quickly to show you the formula so you know what I'm talking about. Standard error is technically sigma over the square root of n, but we often have to use the approximation s over the square root of n if sigma is unavailable to us, which it was in this case because we don't know the population standard deviation for undergraduate enrollments for all colleges. We only know it for our, the sample of colleges that we're to we're looking at.